Wagwan Vaping Bread Bins. Welcome to another honest hardware review from the Vaping Mods. Today, it is the latest pod mod instalment from Geek Vape. It is the Aegis Pod. So this was very kindly sent to me for the purposes of review by Geek Vape. Geek Vape, if you're listening, and I hope you are, thank you very much, much appreciated. And it is another in the lineup of ever-increasing pods that are on the market. And I have to say, I don't think it gets a lot simpler than this. There's no menu to worry about, there's no screen to worry about, there's no variable wattage to worry about. This kicks out a constant 18 watts of power, chargeable via a type C USB charging cable which comes in the box. It really is very, very simple. Let's dive down for a closer look. So here's the packaging for the new Aegis pod. This, I think, will not be the full retail packaging because the picture of the pod on the front looks to me more like a concept than what actually has arrived in the box. You'll see that in just a second. Other than that, it is pretty standard Geek Vape packaging, black front cover with the picture of the mod, orange on the sides, and on the back you get all the information about the pod itself and some information about the coils. So it says on the back there, type C connection, which is handy, shockproof, waterproof, etc., all of that kind of thing, and some information about the coils, which are canthol mesh. Let's take a look inside. So slidey box to begin with, got the uh, nice glossy Geek Vape logo in the middle, then it's a pull-up box, little card, there's the mod itself, we'll take a closer look at that in just a moment. Then underneath the insert, you've got your instruction manual and your warranty information. You get two coils uh, in here. Obviously one is missing, one is actually in the mod as we speak. But two coils, which are exactly the same, 0 0.6 ohm coils, which is pretty crazy for such a small coil, but they are canthor mesh. And then you also get a type C charging cable as well as a little tool for getting out the coil. So let's take a closer look at the pod itself, and there it is. Doesn't get a lot simpler than this, really. No screen, no variable wattage, literally the, the mod, the pod, and the fire button. This one is the Beetle Black, also comes in Silver Schaefer, Gunmetal and Tamamuchi, I think is how they, uh, or Tamamushi, which is the rainbow effect. This being the Beetle Black, which is quite apt because it does kind of resemble a Beetle. Maybe they should have called this the Scarab. Uh, but as you can see, the mod itself does not resemble the mod that comes on the front of the box. So that must have been some sort of concept design. I'm sure the full retail packaging will have a picture of the actual mod on the front. So no need to go through any menus or talk about operation. It really, really is simple. This obviously is the pod part. That just pulls out and there, look, is where you pop in your coil. So both that come in the packets are 0 0.6 ohms. Strictly speaking, it is sub-ohm, of course. Um, 
You'd think this device was, would be more suited to mouth to lung vaping than direct to lung vaping, but the 0.6 is quite a, a low resistance coil really for that sort of setup, but this is where the tool comes in. You would use that to prise out the coil. What I've read is that with these coils, they have made or chosen these ones because these are going to be um, compatible with other Geek Vape devices coming soon. That is where the fill port is, and I have to say, so far, a lot easier to get the rubber bung out of the fill port uh, than it has been with previous kind of pod mod designs. And it doesn't matter which way it goes in. Either way, it just clicks back into the mod. No variable airflow with this device. On, this, on one side of the pod, you've got these little grooves. I don't know if you can make those out, those little grooves there, look. Uh, that is where the air comes in from. That's only on the one side, not on the other, but it doesn't matter which way around you put the mod into the pod or the pod into the mod. So this one, like I said, is the, uh, the black. You get the typical genuine leatherette design uh, on uh, on these mods this one with the orange stitching i do like the orange stitching. i'm not a massive fan of this kind of leather design uh, but this is synonymous with the aegis range of mods from geek vape so it does sit in the family well in terms of visuals and it looks pretty nice it's got a nice weight to it it feels sturdy it's well built it doesn't feel like it's going to break anytime soon Initially, a bit disconcerting that the thing, oh, it does stand up, but it stands up sideways, but it doesn't stand up that way. Nope. So at first I was a bit unsure, always laying it on its side, but I've had no leaks from this whatsoever so far. So let's do a bit of a size comparison. Here it is next to the Vupu Vinci. Vupu's or one of Vupu's mod pod offerings. As you can see, the Aegis is shorter. Of course, it's thinner, but it's a little bit wider next to the Aegis Boost. Shorter, narrower, smaller in every way really. Uh, now I've got the Boost in front of me, that reminds me, this doesn't work at all now. It is completely done. I can only assume that some juice has leaked from the pod onto the motherboard and it's fried it. Really, really disappointing. I might as well just chuck that in the bin because it just doesn't even fire up. It's never been dropped, it's never been mishandled, it's never been immersed in any water, so it can only be that. I'm hoping the same doesn't happen with this, although I am assured by Geek Vape that this absolutely will not happen with this mod. So there it is next to the Geek Vape Aegis Boost. And also, the shape, the profile of this mod, this pod, reminds me of the remote for a set of car keys. So here is a remote for a car key, which, strictly speaking, this is quite a small remote actually for a car key. Not a lot of difference between them. That sort of shape, that sort of size. So operation of this is all on the button. As you'd expect, you press to fire, one, two, three, four, five, turns that device off. One, two, three, four, five, turns it back on again. It really is as simple as that. Let's take it back up on top, let's vape on it, give you my final thoughts. So welcome back up top. So what do I think of the Geek Vape Aegis Pod? Well, I really like how simple it is. It couldn't really get any simpler. I think the only way that it could be simpler than what it is, is if uh, the whole pod system at the top here that holds the juice, if that came with a, uh, a coil pre-installed and it was one of those disposable type ones that like you can get disposable tanks, yeah? Uh, so you just rip that one out and put another one in. That, I think, is the only way this could be any simpler, although let's be honest, that's not that great for the environment and probably quite expensive. So other than that, I don't think it can get any simpler. When I first saw it, and I saw the shape of what is the, obviously the tank as well as the mouthpiece, I wasn't sure that something so wide like that, I wasn't sure how pleasant the experience of vaping on it was gonna be, but you know what? It's really, really comfortable, and it's really, really nice. Mm. Because of the slim design, it's, it won't stand upright, which I thought was a bit of a concern, but having it placed on its side, it hasn't leaked at all. Now, the first, when I first put a coil in this and then juice and vaped it that evening, 
left it on its side uh, and when I came down in the morning it hadn't leaked any juice which is good but there was a bit of gurgle and I was getting a little bit of juice in my mouth. However, I persevered with it and that sorted itself out within, I don't know, 20 minutes or so or I don't know, maybe 10 puffs, it sorted itself out and it hasn't done that since. So that's a really big plus. Talking of the shape and the form, it feels really nice in your hand, it feels well built, it feels sturdy. It's going to be difficult to damage this, I think. Uh, apparently it is shockproof as well as waterproof and dustproof. And for those of you who like to wear skinny jeans, it's going to sit in your pocket really, really nicely. I'm pretty fat, so all of my jeans are skinny, and it sits in the pocket of my jeans really nicely as well. Let's talk about the coil. I was a little bit confused at first because when I saw this pod, I thought that's, that's mouth to lung all day long. Saw the size of the coils, thought, hmm, that's mouth to lung all day long. Read that it kicks out 18 watts, thought, hmm, that's mouth to lung all day long. However, the coils are a 0 0.6 ohm. Yes, that is sub ohm. Of course it's sub ohm. It's less than one ohm, it's sub ohm. Um, but it's getting towards the very, very lowest of the resistances that you get with a, with a mouth to lung device. Um, but still, around that area, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 ohms, is very much mouth to lung territory, although it does seem to go up quite a bit from there. So I thought mouth to lung. Now, I tried this mouth to lung, and for my taste, it's still far too airy for a mouth to lung device. I can MTL it, but it's not that much of a satisfying experience. Let's give that a go. MTL. Very little vapor. And there's just no resistance there at all. It's far, far too airy for a mouth to lung device. Now, this is only 0 0.3 nicotine content juice. So if I had a higher nick content, then maybe the MTL experience would be a better one, but that's not gonna change how airy the vape is. So for me, this is a DTL, a direct to lung device. Let's DTL it. Much better. Much, much better. Um, now I've got 70, 30 juice in this. When I saw those coils and I thought, oh God, they're small and the wicking holes are quite small as well. I thought that was gonna be 50-50 uh, juice only. However, I did read somebody else had been using 70, 30 juice and it had no problem. So that's what I put in because that's what I've got. And it's juice that I'm very, very familiar with, this one. Um, and I have to say, it does perform admirably. The flavor isn't quite as good as I get in my uh, normal sub ohm uh, tank setups, hitting that at 60 watts, but you wouldn't expect that with such a small coil and 18 watts versus 60 watts. But do you know what? It's not far off. Decent flavor. That does come with a warning though. Initially, at, uh, on that 70-30 juice, it was performing absolutely fine. The flavor was really, really good, but it didn't take long for the flavor to start dropping off. You know when you get that slightly metallic taste? It doesn't taste dry, it doesn't taste burnt, but it gets that slight metallic taste as the flavor drops off. Now that happened quite soon, within just a couple of days of me hitting this. And I mean, I vape a lot, but I wasn't vaping this exclusively. I was still using a lot of my other gear. So it's not like I was on this and only this for two days. On the second day, the flavor did start to drop off. That said, I've not changed the coil yet. And um, that seems to even itself out a little bit. It is still slightly metallic, but you still can definitely taste the juice. So initially, it didn't seem to have any problems wicking that 70-30 juice, but you know what? I still suspect maybe that this will be better with 50-50 juice, albeit using it as a direct-to-lung device and not a mouth-to-lung device. But it's still tasty and it's still simple to use. In terms of uh, what information it does give you, when you are hitting it, or just after you've hit it, you take your thumb off, when you, your device is charged, that fire button has a blue LED. 
When the charge is getting low after you've hit it, that blue light will turn to a red one and you know it's time to recharge the device. Talking of recharging, it comes with a type C charger and it will charge this device from empty or from red to green ready to go in just half an hour, which is pretty quick turnaround. You get various stages of lights. Rather than it flashing, the lights will breathe at you. Red when it's low on charge, blue when it's medium charge, and then green when it's ready to go. Couldn't get a lot simpler than that, could you? So what are my final thoughts on the Geek Vape Aegis pod? Well, I really like it, you know, I didn't think I would, but I really do. I'm not much of a pod person. I'm certainly not much of an MTL person, even though I've not been using this MTL, but I have been using it quite a lot. It's a really nice device to use. It's sturdy, it's compact, it's well-built, it looks proper trick. Uh, I've got to say, even with that sort of fake leather that I'm not a massive fan of, it does look very, very nice. It will fit in your jean pocket or your, a handbag or a purse really, really easily because it's so slim and so small. It's not going to be a big bulging thing in your tight jeans pockets. It's simple, it fires well. Time will tell only how reliable this device is and will juice end up leaking out of the pod system into the mod and knacker it like it has my Aegis Boost. Only time will tell with that. But initial thoughts in the first week are, this is a really cool little device. If you vape DTL, but you're quite fancy, a pod, something a little bit more discreet, something a little bit smaller, something a little bit cheaper, something a little bit easier to use, Give this one a go because it's really easy to use and it's really nice as well. So. That about wraps up this video review for the Geek Vape Aegis pod. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope it's been useful. Hope it either gives you the confidence to go out and buy one and it confirms that it's the right choice or you decided not to go with it because it doesn't really suit. Either way, I hope it's been helpful to you. Thanks for tuning into the channel. I'll catch you again very soon for another honest flavor review or an honest hardware review. Until then, do take care of yourselves. Catch you later, peace.